Hi everybody, in this video we are going to show how to use Visual Studio 2015 diagnostics tools to investigate memory issues and to try to replicate them without reaching the famous out of memory exception. Um, the diagnostic tools appear in Visual Studio under tools, options, debugging, general, and somewhere over here there is enable diagnostic tools while debugging. Now, this feature is maybe not part of every version of Visual Studio. I'm using over here um, the Visual Studio Enterprise. It might not be in the personal or community or professional. And if it's not, that's okay. There are other great tools that you can use to reach the same result. I'll probably record the next video about them, but the best one is called .NET Memory Profiler, which is this guy. Not this guy, sorry. Yes. Ooh, this one, I think. Yes, this is the best tool that I think of in terms of memory profiling. But before I go over to this tool, let's do a first one with Visual Studio. Later I'll record a different video about this one. So, after turning that on, I'm going to run our application. And when it is run, let's close just the previous instances of it that are currently open. Cool. So here it is running. And on the side here in Visual Studio, we can see that it shows me how much memory is being used, how much CPU is being used, and all sorts of events and things that it cares about. So I can go back to the application itself and open the orders program and close it, and open the orders program and close it. Let's say I've done it three times. We can see here that the memory progressed a bit. We can see here that the garbage collection has happened several times. There's a lot of useful information here. But let's create a memory leak and see how that memory leak uh, is represented within these tools that we have. So I'm going to add a static array list and add this instance to the array list. Okay, I'm going to add a show order. So whenever a show order is run, it's actually saved forever in this static list, which is a, a basic memory leak. Don't do this in production, of course. Uh, so here we are, we can look at our memory, we can then say run orders once, twice, three times, four times, five times, okay? Now, here we'll go to memory usage and ask to take a snapshot. When we do that, Visual Studio gives us a breakdown of how many objects exists, what is its size, and when I click on it, I'll actually get a detailed list of all of the objects that are in memory. And there are quite a few over here. Now, there are all sorts of ways of searching through this, and this is quite an extensive list. I can say, please show me everything that has Northwind in it. Okay. And we can see here Northwind theme and Northwind types. We can see all the instances that we care about. And specifically, we can see that Northwind show orders has five instances open. Okay. Now, in a normal scenario, this program should only have one instance in memory because it's been displayed once. Once it's closed, it should be clear. It should be zero over here. Okay? And everything else here are things that are used by this program. So if you try to chase them down, any one of those are used by the programs that we looked at. So um, let's exaggerate or let's repeat the process another 10 times and see what happens. So I'll go to program orders one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hopefully you're not asleep. Let's go back here. We can see the memory is rising consistently. We can take another snapshot and we can have a look at that one. And we can actually have it compare to the previous snapshot. So it will give me a delta of everything. Then let's search for everything that has Northwind in it. Okay. And we can see that there are 60 more dates or 40 more customer ID types. And if we scroll down to what we are actually care, care about, we can see the show orders rise by 10. Okay. So this is how a memory looks like when we repeat an operation and the memory objects that it takes rises and rises and rises. Uh, so once you can reproduce it to this kind of test, we can take it further and figure out the root cause. Usually we'll try to figure out those root cause by following the path to root to figure out what is holding it, what is holding it in memory. Uh, it's not as easy as it sounds, not always as easy as it sounds. It requires some skills and talent, but hey, at the end of the day, you can see here the array list that we've created. So we can see that it's actually holding it. 
Okay, but tracking down memory leaks is an interesting challenge. Uh, so this is it about using Visual Studio to do that. I'm going to create the next video using Docnet Memory Profiler. Have fun.